Texas baseball shuts out LSU in a late comeback. Women's basketball hits a roadblock. And men's basketball is getting set for March. All of this and more coming College Press Box. Good evening and welcome to College Press Box. Thanks for spending your Monday night here with us. I'm your host, Jaxi Pigeon, joined alongside Thomas Fitch. We have a packed show for you tonight. Let's start out on the diamond with Texas baseball. Over the weekend, the 22nd ranked Longhorns took on the second ranked LSU Tigers in Austin. The Horns were firing on all cylinders in the first two games, winning 8-1 to and 8-4. to For the conclusion of the series, let's head down to the dish for the highlights. It was a cold afternoon in Austin, but Horns looking to make the sweep. Bryce Regan, bottom of the third, going to find the gap there. That would be a double. He would then go on to score on a double by Eric Kennedy. With Kennedy on second, Austin Todd going back, back, back. Say goodnight to that one. Horns lead 3-1. to one. Let's fast forward to the ninth inning where the Horns trail 6-4, to four, but Mason Hibbler getting things started off with the single. Then Duke Ellis is going to hit it. Going to be safe there. Throw comes up short, and the Horns now trail just 6-5. to five. Next up, Eric Kennedy. Tigers going for a double play. Miss at second. Miss at first. Run scores, and we are tied. That brings up Austin Todd. That ball is going to get through the middle. Duke Ellis going to round third, and the play will not beat him out. He scores. Horns go on. Win on the walk-off. Complete the sweep, winning 7-6 to six over the Tigers. TSTV's own Jake Herman has more on the Longhorns' dramatic sweep of the Tigers. On a cold Sunday afternoon at the Dish, Texas earned a series sweep over number one LSU in improbable fashion. The Longhorns got off to a fast start with three runs in the bottom of the third inning. Two of these came on Austin Todd's towering home run. But from there, Texas committed a season-high four fielding errors and allowed LSU to seize control of the game. At times it got ugly, but the thing that was impressive is that we never gave in we continue to play the game and uh, put ourselves in an opportunity to win it. The Bayou Bengals scored three unearned runs on the afternoon, but Texas never allowed them to break the game open, and eventually the Longhorns clawed back into it. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not over till the, the last pitch and the last out, and we really live by that. And, you know, coach is always in the dugout telling us, scratch one here, scratch one there. And it, well, it's 100% true. It's not over till it's definitely over. After Michael McCann was hit by a pitch, Mason Hibbler delivered a clutch hit from the bottom of the order, and Lance Ford followed him up with a sacrifice bunt. I mean, we, we don't have one superstar. We've got a bunch of guys that are pretty good in, in just understanding their own strengths. Uh, perfect example of Lance coming off the bench and getting a perfect bunt down, um, just fighting with two strikes and putting the ball in play, especially our speed guys when they can make things happen. Speed played a pivotal role in Texas's comeback, as Duke Ellis knocked in a run with an infield single that cut the lead to 6-5. to five. Eric Kennedy then hit what could have been a game-ending double play, but he beat the throw to first base, setting up Austin Todd to deliver the walk-off single that gave the Longhorns a series sweep. You know, I just try not to do too much with it. You know, try not to overswing and let, kind of let him supply the power. It didn't always come easy for the Longhorns today, but they were able to complete the sweep with a gritty comeback in a 7-6 win over LSU, fueled by Austin Todd's walk-off single. Texas will look to keep this momentum going next week when they go on the road to face another tough team in Stanford. It's any, any time you can get a sweep against those guys like that, it's a big win for us. Uh, we're here to play. You know, we're here to compete. Um, you know, we're not going to go down lightly. We're, you know, come at us because we're, we're going to come at you. For TSTV Sports, I'm Jake Herman. Joining us now in the studio is baseball analyst Eric Goodman. Now, Eric, Texas came into the three-game series this past week versus number two LSU as the underdog. What statement do you think Texas made with their sweep? Well, the first, my first reaction was that last year's college football, or sorry, college World Series run, no fluke. And there was a bit of a question about that. I mean, Texas didn't have the strongest showing in that World Series, kind of surprised some people by being there. But now it looks like last year's College World Series appearance in Omaha, the first of many under David Pierce. Honestly, I think you can say that by this dominant sweep that they had over LSU. And dominance in the first two games, yes, showing that they can compete and, and compete very favorably with some of the best in the country. LSU, by the way, some of the best in the country, make no mistake about that, despite this, these three losses. 
Um, they show they can win those games emphatically, and even when they're down in the ninth inning, they have a, David Pierce has established a winning culture that suggests that Texas is never out. You can never count them out, and they, most importantly, never count themselves out, which means they can put together these late inning runs, capitalize on some mistakes, and take home games that they really have no business winning in the end. And even in the cold weather, UT baseball fans were cheering in sellout fashion. Given these harsh conditions, it took a while for the team to pull off these wins. Group effort, definitely. What do you think is the character of this Texas baseball team this season? Yeah, I mean, like I just said, it's one we're winning. It's, it's a culture of winning even when things aren't necessarily going their way. And it's also a balanced team, and that is so important. Last year, you had guys like Cody Clemens and guys like Nolan Kingham who kind of took a lot of the load on their shoulders. This year, you can name 12 guys that are legitimate contributors to their early season success. Uh, most notably, Austin Todd, who's had a breakout season. But he's alongside guys like Bryce Regan, guys like uh, Eric Kennedy, who are young guys. And that's another thing about this team. They're young. They haven't had those trials and tribulations of old teams. They're coming straight from high school baseball where they're the guys. And they said, hey, you know, we were the guys in high school. Why don't we be the guys in college too? And so they're bringing that young mentality to the, the never say die mentality to Dish Falk Field. And so far, it's showing with great success. All right. And going forward, uh, we have another game versus in Palo Alto versus number six, Stanford. Do you think that they will be able to maintain this momentum throughout the season? This is going to be tough. It's honestly the one thing that Texas hasn't really proven they can do. They haven't had a chance to really prove it, and that is winning on the road. Yeah, they started the season against uh, Louisiana Lafayette, took two out of three there. It was a nice start to the series, a nice start to the season. But Stanford's a different animal, number six in the country. It's going to be arguably a more difficult series to win than the home series against LSU. Um, but again, Texas is such a balanced team that it, any, any player can have a down night and usually three or four can step up in their absence. It's just going to be a matter of we haven't seen what Stanford looks like this season too much. They haven't really played too many people. Um, so we'll have to see how strong they are and how ready they are. Uh, but, I mean, Texas has proven even if it's that uh, lousy Bay Area weather. I mean, we had that this weekend, didn't we, some lousy Yes, very much weather. so. Texas won three games in that, so I, I think uh, Texas comes in very favorably looking against Stanford. Thanks, Eric. When we come back, Texas women's basketball looks to take down Iowa State Cyclones. Stick around, you won't want to miss it. Welcome back in the College Press Box. On Saturday, Texas women's basketball took on Iowa State for senior night. However, things did not go the Longhorns way as the Cyclones jumped out to a 27-10 lead in the first quarter. Things didn't get any better for Texas as they go on to lose 82-73. Our very own Daniel Shee was at the game and has more. Texas is trying to bounce back from a 29-point loss in Waco on Monday and honor the seniors in the final regular season home game here in the Frank Irwin Center. However, number 20, Iowa State Cyclones had other plans as they shot 5 of 7 behind the arc and jumped out to a 17-point lead only in the first half. I thought they were getting too many easy looks. And again, you have to make them. And they had some looks like that in Ames that they didn't make. But tonight, we didn't make a, a quick enough adjustment. You know, our hands weren't active. We weren't high like we talked about. And we gave up a lot of, I think, I want to say probably four or five transition threes in the first half. Knowing that that's what they do best, I mean, you just have to, you can't do that against a team like Iowa State. I, 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 I thought the first probably 13, 14 minutes of the game was as good as we could play. I, I thought we had some really good looks at the three. And, and some of that, I think we had some open threes because they were pressing and scrambling. And when you get a scattered court situation, uh, you probably had a few more than normal. but. Basketball is a make shot, miss shot game, and uh, it sounds silly, but tonight, uh, uh, luckily, we, we made a few. For the three seniors on the team, the loss is a bittersweet experience, but Danny Williams is keen to turn the page around and focus on the last few games of the season. You never want to lose. I mean, that's never fun. Uh, senior night, it's a special night, but also it's, it's just another, it's another game. You know, we got to use that as motivation. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but... Um, we got to turn the page and move on. It's on me, it's on our seniors uh, to understand that these are our last few uh, games, our last few practices. 
and so we got to bring that energy and tomorrow's a new day a new opportunity to to adjust and get better Texas will now travel to Fort Worth for the last regular season game against the TCU Horn Frogs on Tuesday. After that, they will go fly to Oklahoma City for the Big 12 tournament, where the highest seeding they can get is a third seed after this loss to Iowa State. From the Frank Irwin Center, this is Daniel Shi, TSTV Sports. We now welcome on our women's basketball analyst, Bailey Wald. And Bailey, the Horns lost 82 to 73 in just their second back to back loss of the season. But what caused this loss? Well, Iowa State's off really early. They were up by nine only five minutes into the game and at the end of the first quarter they were up by 17 and that lead just kept going. They were up by 20 at the half and then in the third quarter Texas was able to come back a little bit with five straight points. They closed the lead to 11 and then back down to seven in the fourth quarter but by that time there was less, less than a minute left in the game and it was much too late. In the first half Texas was shooting 14 percent from the three and that's just not good enough for this team. Danny Williams was one for six for threes, which is very unlike how she normally is in, the in all of her games. So I think this team really just needed some more momentum. It's a make or miss game. They couldn't make a bucket, and that's really just their main, was their main issue this game, and that's why they couldn't win. Yeah, they'll have to get some momentum going because they just have one game left in the regular season, and they sit one game back of Iowa State for second place in the Big 12. So what can this team do to get back on track before postseason play? Well, like you said, they only have one game left, and they really need to do what they did before these past two games, before Iowa State and before Baylor. They were doing really well the whole season. Shug Sutton uh, scored 20 points this game, which was the third game this season that she's done so. But what happened is all the other teams have figured out how to get on her and not let her score. So the team needs to work something out where she's able to score with or they need to find another player who can be some big weapon. And Danny Williams really needs to be on her game shooting threes. This game, she had a career high of nine rebounds and three steals. So if she can keep doing that, she'd be great. They also had their best quarter of the season in the four, fourth quarter of this game with 33 points. If they can continue to play like that at the end of the game, they should be able to play like that throughout the entire game. They really just need to rally and they need to do that for every game for the rest of the season. Yeah, as we look forward to the postseason, Bailey, what are your predictions for this team? Well, I think that they're going to beat TCU, so that's their next game, and that's tomorrow. And then after that, they'll be going to the Big 12 tournament, and I really think that they're going to lose to Iowa State again in the semifinals. This time, it will be in a neutral court, and although Texas has done well on the road, they already lost to Iowa State at home, and I think that in a neutral court, that will not help them at all, which means that they won't be hosting any tournament games and so I really think they're going to lose in the second round of the tournament. Well, Bailey, thanks for joining us. When we return, we take a look at how men's basketball failed, fared over the weekend against the Cyclones, and then we look at the coming week in Longhorn sports. Stick around. Welcome back. It's officially March, so the madness is beginning. Texas basketball took on the Iowa State Cyclones this past Saturday at the Frank Irwin Center. Coming off two straight losses, this was an important game for the Longhorns in order to have a shot at making the NCAA tournament. Let's head down to the Frank Irwin Center for the highlights. Elijah Mitrulong getting things started off for the Horns with a jumper. Then Matt Coleman alley-oop to freshman Jackson Hayes. Iowa State guard Lindell Wigington drives in to get a two in the paint. Coleman again to Jace Febres from beyond the arc. You're gonna want to remember that name. Mitru Long once more passes to Hayes for fast break and a dunk. The drum is going wild, horns up by 12 at the half. Dylan Osikowski to Coleman to Febres again for the three. Marielle Shayok with a three to keep it competitive. Matt Coleman with the assist to Courtney Ramey. He's going to have 18 points for the night. Marielle Shayok once more with a three for Iowa State. But the Horns stayed in the driver's seat as Jace Febris gets up for another three. Longhorns defeat the Cyclones 86 to 67, adding another Big 12 win for Texas. We now welcome on our men's basketball analyst Clark Dalton. And Clark, Texas picks up a big home win against Iowa State. But just what does this win mean for the Horns? This is a phenomenal win for the Longhorns because it demonstrated they have the ability 
to persevere under adverse circ circumstances. Iowa State was a top 20 team, so this was a huge win for their tournament resume. Additionally, during the course of the game, they came back from that nine point deficit and went on a 15 to three run and dominated throughout. Additionally, they gained the confidence that they can win without Kerwin Roach. When Kerwin was suspended, everyone wrote this team off because they lacked a true identity. But with Kerwin's absence, it's forcing younger players to step up and that identity is beginning to be chiseled. Yeah, and the Horns will be without Kerwin Roach tonight as they travel up to Lubbock, facing a top 10 op opponent for the fourth time this season, taking on the number eight, eight ranked Texas Tech Red Raiders. But can Texas carry this momentum on the road, a place where they really struggled a lot this season? Absolutely. They just have to cater to their youth. The trio of, Ray of Ramey, Hayes, and Febres can be special. Courtney Ramey plays with that energy. It just shifts momentum in the game. You can feel it when he's getting steals and getting assists. And Jackson Hayes, we praised him all throughout the season. He's probably going to be a top 10 pick come June. But who's really stood out during the last two games is Jace Febres. He's averaging 24 points per game and shooting 63% from three. And Jace is really important because more so than any other player, he's been a microcosm for this roller coaster ride. It seems like when Jace is playing well, Texas is finding a way to win because there's a new dimension to their offense. Yeah, Febres has played well. He was named the Big 12 Player of the Week uh, this past week. And with just two games left for Texas before the Big 12 tournament, Clark, what are your predictions for this team the rest of the season? Well, unfortunately, Texas Tech is 16-1 and at home, so I don't think they're going to get the W, but I do think they'll win at TCU, and they'll survive the first round of the Big 12 tournament, making the NCAA tournament as a 10 seed. Well, Clark, thanks for joining us. Great analysis. As usual, when we return, we'll take a look at everything going on this week in Longhorn Sports. Stick around. You don't want to miss it. And we're back with College Press Box. Thanks for sticking with us. The number two ranked women's swimming and diving team won their seventh straight Bay 12 title this past Saturday by 319 points over their competitors. Texas took 19 events over the week and swept all five relays. Senior Joanna Evans set two new Bay 12 meet records. Junior Allison Gibson won her third career Big 12 title and won women's diver of the meet. On the men's side, Texas now has as many Big 12 championships wins as UT has acres. This past Saturday, Eddie Reese's fourth ranked Longhorns defeated West Virginia, TCU, and the rest of the conference. UT took 19 of the 21 events with Ryan Hardy setting a meet record in the 200 back and the 100 back. Over the weekend, Texas softball competed in the Sun Devil Classic in Arizona. On Friday, the Horns defeated Wisconsin 5-1 and number 15 Arizona State 11-4. On Saturday, they defeated Princeton 15-2 before falling to Wisconsin 1-3. On Sunday, the Horns finished up the weekend losing to Arizona State 9-6. Sophomore Lauren Burke led the Longhorns batting 389 with eight RBIs, while senior Brooke Bollinger, junior Miranda Ellish, and sophomore Ariana Adams picked up wins over the weekend. The team will take the field next in Austin on Wednesday night against Longwood. This past Sunday, Texas men's tennis took on the Georgia Bulldogs for the first time since 2015. Due to the rain, they only played singles matches that were split between outdoors and indoors. Senior Colin Marks had his 12th straight win overall and kept his dual match record a perfect 8-0. The Longhorns were able to pull off a 4-2 win, moving them to 13-1 for the season. This week in Longhorns sports on Tuesday, baseball taking on UT Rio Grande Valley. That'll be 4-30 on Longhorn Network. Women's basketball taking on TCU, 6-30 on Fox Sports Southwest Plus. Then men's basketball, sorry, men's basketball is playing currently against Texas Tech. That's 8 o'clock uh, right now on ESPN. And on Thursday, baseball travels to Stanford where they'll be playing four-game series through Sunday. On Friday, track and field has the indoor NCAA championships. That'll be Friday through Saturday. Then softball also on Friday at the Texas Invitational through Sunday. All those games will be on LHN. Also on Friday through Monday, women's b basketball will be at the Big 12 tournament. Finally, on Saturday, men's basketball takes on TCU at home, 11 o'clock on ESPN2. And women's soccer uh, will travel to face the Houston Dash at 3 o'clock. And that wraps up our show for tonight. From all of us here in the studio and everyone in Master Control, thank you for joining us on your Monday night. Be sure to tune in to College Crossfire on Wednesday nights for the best sports debate on the 40 acres. Until then, I'm Jaxie Pigeon. And I'm Thomas Fitch. Have a great night.